Hello, we are now on to the cover. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to locate these two images from the 8x8 collection. Hopefully you have not cut into them and you've set them aside. So go ahead, get these two images and set them aside. Now you're going to go to your cover, the cover of your album. And what we're going to be doing first is we are going to be adding um, one mat of that's the gold the gold part which I use gold vellum which I just got at Joann's that's going to be the bottom mat and the red paper from the patterns and solids is going to be your second mat now with the gold vellum you can see there is not much reveal of the gold vellum but let me show you what you're going to do you are going to get your gold vellum or if you want to just use the gold cardstock from the patterns and solids that's that's fine too i just like the sparkle of the gold vellum now with vellum you know you cannot use glue and you don't want to put tape too close to the edge because you can see it so what i did uh, i only want a small amount of black reveal from the cover so i cut my my gold vellum to the size I want it to have about my sixteenth of an H reveal of the black um, part of the album and I'm going to be adding score tape about a quarter of an inch in all the way around that way my score tape is not going to be showing because I'm going to be covering at that with the red patterns and solids so you're going to cut your gold vellum to size with their small amount of black reveal adhere it with score tape and then you can put some score tape in the center also to get it down then you will add your red cardstock and this is about how much reveal i have of the gold so the black gold and now we have our red i ink the edges of the red card stock with the vintage photo and I also inked the edge of the gold vellum just the edge with the vintage photo also so you got those two down then you're going to go back to your 12 12 your 8 by 8 images of this scene you are going to get your first one so we're going to have a we're going to have a background and a foreground. This is going to be our background piece. You will cut it. I kind of cut out the trees in through here, cut it straight across here, and then when you came to the tree here, I cut it like this because we are going to be using this tree and we're going to put it on the foreground somewhere. So cut this piece like this just make sure you you preserve this tree you do not cut into the tree that's here and then just cut across don't really need to cut it like this you can basically just cut it all the way across i don't use anything from here so do that and you are going to ink the edges here and you are going to push this background piece of the eight by eight all the way up to have a small reveal of the red on the top and on the edge here. So that's what you're going to do with this background piece of the 8x8. Eight eight. Don't worry about this because we are going to cover up this with some other stuff. So get that adhered. Now with the second piece move this picture over a little bit with this second eight by eight piece what you're going to do is you are going to cut it at the mountain edge you are just going to follow the mountain edge and cut it around just follow that mountain edge and cut it so you're going to pres preserve all of this part of the image so far so good 
And what I did with this, this foreground piece of eight by eight, I inked the edges of the mountains with black soot. And then I went over it with some vintage photo. I just inked it with some vintage photo. So you have this second piece. Now what you're going to do with the second piece is you are going to make it again flush with the right edge and you're going to pull it so it's going to have um, the exact reveal you need for the bottom part. So you're going to have this gap in between the two mountain ranges. So far so good. Here I have not inked this second um, foreground mountain range yet with black soot or the vintage photo. But I just wanted to see, show you how they're going to come together. So this background piece is going to be pulled all the way to the top. This bottom piece is going to be pulled all the way to the bottom. Just have our small red reveal on the top and the bottom and our small reveal on the right hand side. So these two 8 by 8 images are going to be flush with each other down on this edge. So it will look something like this. So you can see the, the top part's been pulled up. It's flush to the top with a tiny bit of red reveal. It's flush to the right edge with a tiny bit of red reveal. Same thing with this bottom piece. It's, it's flush with the right with a tiny bit of red re reveal. And it's at flush to the bottom with a tiny bit of red reveal down here. Now what you're going to be doing is you, we are going to be inserting a piece in between the background and the foreground eight by eight image. So I am pretty sure you can adhere this background piece down. Don't don't quite adhere this foreground piece down. We, we are going to be doing something. And if you do, just adhere it to this right hand side. But we are going to be lifting up this foreground 8x8 and we're going to be adding something in between this background and this foreground to cover up the edge over here. So what you're going to do next is you will be getting the same Im image but this is from the 12x12. 12 12. This is you are going, going to be cutting this piece which is from taken from the right upper corner of this 12 by 12 piece and we're going to be cutting off this mountain. Pay no attention to up here. <laughs> Once I cut this I used this 12 by 12 for some other stuff. But you are just going to get this 12 by 12 image of the same scene. You're going to go to the right upper hand corner and you are going to be cutting, and I believe this is three and a half inches in, and you're just going to make a cut. Yes, this is three and a half inches in and then you're going to make that cut. So now we have this mountain image that's been cut. We are going to be cutting this to get rid of this, this golden part of the right upper hand corner of that 12 by 12 image. So what I did is I went up this mountain, this of all this mountain edge here, and just kind of cut around like this. And this doesn't really matter because we're going to be adding something up here. 
but you want to preserve this mountain area right in through here. So what you're going to end up with is a piece that looks like this. And this is going to be adhered to the left side of your eight by eight in between the two eight by eights. So let me show you what that's going to look like. I think I have one more image here. Yes. So here we have our background eight by eight, our foreground eight by eight. The foreground has not been adhered down yet. You are going to cut this part of the foreground eight by eight. So this part up here that's sticking up, <coughs> excuse me, you are going to go to this part right here. Here's that little dip right here. And you are just going to, I outlined it for you here. You are going to cut this like this. So you are going to be kind of outlining this tree in the foreground. Okay, so you're going to be cutting this piece out of this foreground. You're going to be cutting it something like this. So what you are going to end up with is this is the piece that you just inserted in between the foreground and here's the background. You inserted this piece. This piece is going to be following, we're, here's our foreground mountain ridge. Here's the piece we just inserted up in here. So this piece is flush to the edge on the left side. So we only have our tiny bit of red reveal here. So I hope that makes sense. Now this tree actually was cut from the background image. Remember the background image, we only, let me go back to that background image. We saved this part of the, the tree, remember? So you are going to be cutting just the tree and you are going to be adhering that tree. This is the tree from this background eight by eight piece. You're going to be adhering it flush to the right. And the way you cut the tree, I don't have a picture of it. You're going to follow the tree. And when you get down to this part of, of this image, you are just going to be cutting it and following it and going around this um, tan image. So you are just cutting this part of the tree. So cut the tree, follow the branches, fussy cut it, get to this part, and then you're going to be going down and then just cutting it down to here. This part, we are actually going to be, you'll see, you'll see in a little bit, but cut the tree cut the tree and adhere it. And that's going to be flushed to um, the left hand image here. And I think the rest, I have a video of what I kind of did with this bottom piece. So this is your bottom um, part of the foreground eight by eight. And we are actually going to be covering up this foreground piece with some more fussy cutting 
that you'll see in a little bit. But get that tree, just cut it from the background image, cut it to this piece, and then just go in like this. And then I will insert a video that I have made at the end showing what we did with this. So what I did is I cut this bottom 8x8 eight eight sheet that was pulled up, I cut its bottom off in here. Just to give this a little bit more dimension. And I backed it on um, black cardstock, left the edges without black cardstock. I just wanted to give this some stability and make it firm. So I'm going to be adding this here. It doesn't go all the way to the end here, but you have plenty of stuff you can go through your collection, and I have no idea where I cut this off. One of the many places that has this greenery, and I'm just going to place it right here. So I will have this whole edge filled in, and this will give us some 3D dimension down here like that. I don't know if you can even appreciate the 3D dimension there. But what I also want to do, now that we have this piece, before you put it down, there's a, some negative space here, and I wanted to put something down there. So I was looking at some of the cut-aparts. Here's this little deer from the 8x8, and here's the, the deer from the 12x12. Different sizes. It'd be nice if there was one in between, but we got the little guy and the big guy. The big guy is, to me, he's too big. He just looks too big there. Maybe not, because he is in the front. What do you guys think? Too big? To me, he just looked a little too big. So I got this little guy. He's a little too big small, maybe. He actually looks okay there. He's hiding behind these little branches. So I think he kind of fits in well in this negative space, even though we still have more, but I don't want to clutter it up. So I think that will look good like that. He's tucked behind here. This gives you the three dimension down here. And I inked it with black so it and then went over it with the vintage photo just to make it pop out a little bit more. Now we have this part up here we need to deal with. So my original thought was using the name of this is Home for the Holidays. So we have these options. Oops. We can use this big cut apart that was from the 12 by 12 collection. I inked the edges here. There's the big one. That looks okay, that looks pretty good. The little one, and I kind of backed it on some gold vellum. That just looks too small. The scale is, is too small. And then you have this chipboard piece. That's, a, it's in between. It's, 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 it's smaller than this, but bigger than this. So I put that down there. It does have some dimension to it. It is chipboard. And I thought, well, if I back it on some more chipboard, I always black my edges, and then put some more of this gold vellum behind it that would pop it up like this and give it just a little glow around the edges. I'm not sure if you can see the little glow. Let me just hold that up. You can just see the little gold vellum under there. Just giving it a little shimmer behind it and have it off a little bit off to the right. 
my initial thought was to use this. But I'm all about wear and tear on my albums. So when you open and close it, these parts might start getting frayed. This will never get frayed. It's heavy chipboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file down these little bumpies here. I'm going to paint this, not paint it, I'm going to use my gold Sharpie to go around it. Probably put a little bit of Winkostella around it to, to give it a little bit more glow. And then I am going to put that there. And that will be the cover like this. Cut this out, put it down here, and I keep this without black cardstock because I want this edge to be flush down with this edge of the of the um, of the paper. I don't want it sticking up from the paper, so that way it's nice and flush, and you don't see it sticking up from the the sides or the bottom. And then you can, before you glue this down, make sure you get your little little deer in the position you want him. So I wanted to come back with a final picture of the album cover. So you added this element down here. I actually did not um, glue these top parts. I just kind of, I kind of left this open a little bit so especially right here so the little deer actually just tucks right in but you can glue this adhere this all the way down if you wish but what I did up here I I created this just like I said in the other video but underneath I added the gold vellum from a die cut this is three inches in diameter with my stitch die cut and I put this gold vellum at the very bottom there is a chipboard element that is raising this chipboard element. You saw that on the other video. And right under this chipboard, I put this gold vellum, which is, I think, this was, this was three inches. This was two and a half inches, I believe. And then in between the two gold vellums, I stuck in this little cut apart of flowers. I believe this is from the 12 by 12 cut apart there's some a flower um, some flowers there I put that in there and the last thing I did was I found this corner piece to fill in this left upper um, upper edge up here I wanted to to do something up here and I believe I got this from a 12 um, the 12 by 12 cut aparts of the cards they have those little cards. I took that from one of the corner pieces, but there's a bunch of these elements that you can cut from a lot of places. Just make it a corner and then do some fussy cutting. Make sure you ink the edges with black soot to make it stand out and just adhere it to this corner. And then you'll have the final piece which kind of fills everything out. So that's it for the cover.